All right. First question. Are planks safe? Okay. I'm glad this is first because this is probably the most controversial. Um, here's the deal. The research on this has changed so much and it also really depends on who you talk to. I know tons of different experts who I highly respect who've been in the industry far longer than me that have differing opinions on this. Okay. So you all know crunches are not good. They are completely useless for pregnancy. They are only going to make matters worse for your postpartum recovery. And I'm sure we'll get into that more. So that has always been said. And so the alternative used to be, well, then let's just do planks. Which is what I did. I, I have like a photo of doing a plank at like around Thanksgiving and Tommy was born right after the new year. So like I was that person last time around. Totally. But did you get, but do you have any diastasis recti from that pregnancy? No, I don't think so, but I'm already starting to see coning. Now. Okay, so I got mine after my second. And this is what I think, you guys. If if you don't want to have diastasis recti, which, by the way, just let's, let's just, we're going to talk about it. I'll just say it right now. You're, here's your six pack, right? Let's just say this is your six pack that you wish you had. <laughs> okay? When your baby grows and the uterus presses on the abdominal wall, right? So the baby's behind here is pressing. Your abdominals have to separate to let that baby grow, to let the uterus get bigger, right? So in order for that to happen, your abs have to separate a certain amount. When they separate too much, that is what we call a diastasis recti. And as you can imagine, that is going to take more work in your postpartum recovery to bring that back, okay? So if you, um, we need to let this process happen naturally, okay? So we don't necessarily want to fight it. And so here's the theory sometimes with the planks, right? So there's, there's, there's two problems with the planks. One, if we're trying to let our abs separate naturally and we continue to tighten our abdominals and you know mistakenly do things like crunches and even now planks are saying, we're, all, we're a little bit fighting that process, right? We're trying to like close this gap that needs to separate on its own. Additionally, okay, if we continue to do planks, right? And let's say here's my plank, okay, and I, uh, and I'm not able to engage in all this, right? I mean, here's my postpartum belly still. Pressing out here, and I'm in this plank, it's a lot of pressure on those abdominals, so it also could alternatively make them separate more, right? I mean, I know those kind of sound like two opposite scenarios, but it's going to depend a lot on are you carrying multiples? Like, are you carrying more than one baby? Um, is it your second pregnancy? And did you not close the gap all the way from your first culprit here for sure? I think that's okay. my, I think that's my issue. Right. Um, did we maybe jump back into doing traditional core work right after our pregnancies and we thought we were healed? Right. I mean, there's, yeah, I'm right with you. Um, so there's, there's, I mean, there's so many different scenarios, but this is what I would say. If you do not want to have to deal with any kind of diastasis recti, if you want to make your postpartum recovery easier, meaning not as much work, forget a traditional plank. Now, that doesn't mean you can't do planks, period. Um, if you even go to my expecting more workouts, I'm sure Sarah has some too. Uh, my expecting more workouts are my original pregnancy workouts that I did with my son Landon. And I at least knew enough then to modify the planks, meaning do them just like I'm doing from here on a couch. Do them modified. Um, so that you are elevated. If you can put your body on an incline, you're not going to put as much pressure on those abdominals if you feel like you have to do them. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. I say skip them and do things like side planks, do things like bird dog. Um, I mean, I have my new program is completely diastasis recti safe because I've been through it and it's such a bitch if I can just say to recover from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that because one of the questions that I have is someone said, I've been doing HIIT workouts all the way through my, my pregnancy. I'm now at my fifth month. And they said, I don't want to be doing side pikes and bird dog for the next four to five months. Um, I know. Said, so, so I was like, I got to jump to this question. So what if, if those those are the two moves we just said are safe, if somebody wants something else, the, the next question kind of it goes into what type of movements should people do so we said side plank i mean side plank we said bird dogs which if people aren't familiar with that's when you're on all fours and you raise up a right arm and you raise up a, le a left leg and you alternate working your quarter balance um what, what other moves can people do i know obviously yeah you have workout so, can you see me by the way 
What I'm going to avoid is ever going into extension. So, right, like, I mean, so I don't want to go here. This is what I don't want to do because you guys see what this does, right? This spreads my abdominals. And I doubt we're going to get to postpartum recovery, you guys, but basically everything we're saying applies to postpartum recovery, unfortunately. Like, that's why I called my postpartum workout the fourth trimester is because it kind of all applies. You can start to do a little bit more cardiovascularly, I think, um, and you can obviously go onto your, onto your belly, but these exercises are good for postpartum too. So I don't want to spread the abs. I'm going to keep this engaged here. I call it um, giving your baby a little hug here, hugging your baby to your spine. And then I'm going to lift up this way. Let's say I want to do bicycles, okay? Twisting, we're not going to twist like this during pregnancy, but you can go laterally. So then I would do it this way. These would be my bicycles. I don't know. What's another crunch? Um, like oh, let's say, okay, you know crunches on your back where you're going like this? Or toe taps. I had a friend ask me about toe taps. Toe taps. Uh, toe taps are great for postpartum. When you get into your, you could probably even do them first and second trimester. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, um, we're talking about toe taps like this. First of all, pregnant women, lie down on your side first. Okay, that's also going to help prevent diastasis. Side first, back. Okay, so here's my toe taps, right? For, post, for postpartum and probably first trimester, you could do them like this. Eventually, you're going to feel like you cannot keep this engaged anymore. It's just going to feel like it's flaring. Like, can you feel that already, Sarah, in your second trimester? Yeah, a little bit. I, I can still kind of, I, I haven't been doing the toe taps, but first trimester I was good. But yeah, I'm, I'm already starting You could to probably do them like this, and it's going to feel lame. But, and here's the deal. You guys, you're pregnant. It's going to feel super lame. <laughs> I, I also found... You know what, what, what move? Um, I find that doing total body moves that incorporate the core are really good as well. Like things like squats where you're holding, granted I, I like to lift weights, where you're holding weights up by your shoulders and whereas those weights are bringing your chest forward, you really have to engage your core to keep your proper posture. You're going to get 100%. to percent where you're not going to want to use those shots, weights. you guys. I don't want you twisting because again, it's like you're trying to like, it's going to spread your, it's going to spread your abdominals even more, but you can rotate your body as a whole and do chops. That's a good one. Yeah. Right? And that's that, a really great yep. one for postpartum and pregnancy. Another one that I've been enjoying doing is uh, med ball slams. I know you're not supposed to lift heavy weights, but I've been lifting heavy weights. Yeah, so but like a 10 pound like... med ball slam. Um, I, I enjoy those. I think those yeah, are Yeah, and you guys, I mean, th that's a whole other controversy. Like, should you lift weights? Shouldn't you lift weights? My personal opinion is you need to be able to lift up your baby and all of the stuff that goes along with it. So that's gonna vary between five and like 25 pounds probably. Um, and granted, you're not gonna do it immediately in your postpartum recovery, but you're gonna need to do it pretty quickly. So yeah. think of like that's what you're training for. Do you, should you do CrossFit? In my opinion, hell no. Because it's gonna, it's gonna really affect your pelvic floor. That's what you're concerned about is think about like your bladder trying to, or your, vagina trying to hold everything in and you're just like layering your pelvic floor with massive amounts of weight it's not a great idea if you want again to like not pee yourself after you're done oh my god i've had a cough for the past two weeks and every time i cough i like pee myself it's miserable <laughs> when i was That's pregnant funny. this last time too my husband and i went to new york for this like business trip and we were both like deathly sick and in TMI, I had to just like lay down like towels in the bed because I was having coughing attacks. <laughs> like this is so not sexy. True life. Um, hopefully none of Nick's friends are watching. They always love when I reveal personal things and they text him and tell him I share them. But anyway, all right, moving on. <laughs> um, the next question, we kind of already went through it. I'm only going to say it because if, if we miss something, somebody's question is very basic. It was just how to avoid diastasis. We've kind of gone over that, I think. Is there anything else you want to add that, you know? Yeah, I just, just keep, keep in mind the three big things. And you guys, um, if you go to PregnancyCoreExercises.com, PregnancyCoreExercises.com, I give you these for free. And I also give you um, alternatives. So think of it this way. Um, no to crunches, right? Um, no to twisting but you can rotate um, and no to anything where you're flaring the rib cage. Um, 
So that's like an up dog. You want to like skip that. If you're, so if you are a yoga chick and you want to do your, um, you know, your vinyasa or your sun salutation, what I recommend is that when you come down to here, first of all, put your knees down. And when everybody else goes into up dog, I want you to go back to down dog. So it would look something like, you know, da 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 here, back. I, I love you. Does that make sense? Yeah. You're, by the way, I watched, you guys have to check out Sarah's yoga flow, or I think you just call it ab flow. Core but, flow, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it was like my style of like prenatal yoga. Like I go to prenatal yoga class and like we just sit and we stretch and I'm like, no, I kind of want to work out, but like I want to do yoga and yours kind of felt like that. So I, I'm excited to try that one next. Um, all right, moving.